Hello, blog readers. I'm here with top employment lawyer Jerry Matman to discuss the key trends from the newest edition of the Workplace Class Action Report for 2017. Wage and hour class action certifications increased geometrically in 2016, which is why it is number five of our six key trends for 2016. Jerry, what were the litigation statistics for wage and hour certification decisions? Like no other year before, the federal courts were chock full with certification rulings on wage and hour issues. We had more rulings than in any other year in the past. There were 244 wage and hour class action and collective actions decisions. 195 of them were the first stage conditional motions and 29 were decertification motions. This was a increase uh, exponentially over 2015 when there were 175 total decisions. As a result, Chapter 5 of our book, which covers wage and hour certification decisions, is the thickest chapter in our book. What is the story behind these numbers? Well, uh, there are several facets of, uh, of the story behind the numbers. Uh, presently, there are more wage and hour class actions and collective actions in the federal court system than ever before. In 2015 and 2016, there were more wage and hour cases filed than in the last 15 years. So virtually every federal court is facing a docket chock full of wage and hour cases. Uh, and it also is reflective of the fact that the Fair Labor Standards Act is a piece of New Deal legislation from 1938, somewhat of a round peg being fit into a square hole insofar as it's being applied to our new digital workplace. And there are gray areas of the law in terms of how uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act and its overtime obligations impact employers in this new digital economy. And then fueling that growth was in uh, 2016, the Obama administration indicated that the uh, overtime exemptions would be changed and amended, created quite a bit of pent up expectations on the part of many, many workers about in essence a pay raise. And as we know, uh, in December of 2016, those new regulations were enjoined they're now on hold uh, based on an appeal in the Fifth Circuit, and the Trump administration is sending signals that uh, those regulations may fall by the wayside. So uh, these factors have uh, coalesced into a situation where wage and hour issues are on the top of the agenda for most plaintiff's lawyers and also for workers and advocates for workers. This seems like a vulnerable touch point for employers. What do these numbers mean for employers? Well, what they reflect is uh, the stock market um, phenomenon of filings by plaintiffs, class action lawyers. It's cheaper uh, to file these sorts of cases. It's easier and less expensive to certify them. And plaintiffs lawyers are converting these filings into large settlements. So if a corporation is looking at its risks, certainly the way in which it pays employees and how it complies with state, local, and federal overtime and wage and hour requirements is where real compliance dollars can have a big impact on the bottom line in terms of avoiding these sorts of lawsuits or creating better defenses for these lawsuits. Very interesting. Blog readers, stay tuned to our Workplace Class Action blog for more on how 2016's trends will impact litigation in 2017. Also, you can learn more about Jerry's findings uh, and what is in store for 2017 in the newest edition of the Workplace Class Action Report. Thanks for your time, Jerry. Thank you.